Grace to you and peace in the name of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome everyone this morning as we gather for worship. It's good to see all of you here this morning. We welcome those who are watching along on Facebook this morning as well. I see we've got a few people there this morning. Um, as we gather together for worship, I hope you had the opportunity to enjoy a few of the scenes from the last, uh, well, the last few years anyway that we've put on video here this morning, and we'll be showing some more uh, uh, next week as well. So, I'd like to draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, I don't know that there's a lot of new ones. Um, one is a reminder about the Peace and Global Witness offering. It used to be called the Peacemaking Offering. Uh, that's coming up uh, the first Sunday in October. But we're starting to talk about it already. You can read a little bit about that. Mark your calendars for a number of events coming up here in the next few, uh, few weeks as we resume some of our fall schedule activities. Uh, the Peacemaking is starting uh, not this Monday, not tomorrow, but uh, a week from Monday. Koinonia is going to start, uh, I believe, this week on Thursday. And PW Circle is on the third Thursday of every month, so starting September 21st. Reminder that next week is our 150th anniversary celebration. And with that, we need a little bit of help. Um, in particular, what we need some help with uh, the people who, have, who, do, who run the computer up here are all in the choir, and the choir is singing. They can't run the computer and the choir, sing in the choir at the same time. And we also need some help with uh, picking up some of our, uh, our shut-in members uh, who would like to be here. And again, several of the people who do that are uh, in the choir, and so uh, we need uh, some volunteers to help with picking up a few people. So if you're able to do that, please uh, drop your name off in the offering plate, uh, drop it off at the office, let us know, talk to my wife Cindy, uh, so we can get those arranged. Um, let's see, uh, was there anything else on here? Uh, Christian Ed meeting on Thursday, we do need to meet. And then next week is the 150th worship celebration. Uh, one other, I think we want to extend the sympathies of our congregation to uh, the family of Tyler Pospisil, uh, who passed away the service, who's going to be Thursday evening, is my understanding, at uh, uh, Benson Funeral Home for Tyler. So prayers uh, for his family. Okay. Yes. Yep. And I realized I said Thursday. I meant Friday for the service. Uh, Friday right, evening. Right yeah. Yep. Is visitation. Are there other announcements you wish to share this morning? I think we need to keep Carol sure in our prayers. Okay. We do keep Carol in our prayers. Um, we also have several other people who are recovering from uh, surgeries and stuff. Uh, 
Henry Luchin's had uh, some surgery this week, and Jan Lowe is recovering from uh, uh, knee surgery, I believe it is. She, I see she was watching online early a little bit ago. Um, yeah, just a minute. I'm, I'm trying to think of the other prayer, prayer concerns we have. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Meyer is right back here. Yep, keep Jeff in our prayers. Um, Angela, that's the one I was trying to remember. Angela Anderson, uh, keep her in our prayers as well. Okay, yes, Kate. Okay, so happy birthday to Donna Bassman, you know, 70th birthday. So, other prayer concerns or announcements that need to be shared this morning? Hearing none, would you please join with me in a word of prayer? Holy and wonderful are you, O Lord. We give you thanks for your presence in our lives each day. On this weekend, as we celebrate those who labor, we are reminded that all good gifts come from you. And so as we gather to worship, we ask your spirit to fill our hearts, to lift our voices, to assure us of your presence, that we may truly honor and glorify you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And our lay leader, this, our lead worshiper this morning is Terry Shizzle. Welcome. Good morning. Please stand and join with me in the call to worship. We gather hoping to see God. Here we worship, we realize that we see God in one another. We can see God. When we show when we pursue hospitality to strangers, when we, live in with one another, when we rejoice in hope, let's worship the visible God among us. Please join with all of us in This is My Father's World.
please join with me in the prayer of confession. God wants us to be ourselves, but every time we hurt one another or ourselves, we get further and further away from who we are. It is in our confession, in admitting the truth of our lives, that we can be our genuine selves again. Let us join in our prayer of confession together. God of love, you ask us to love one another from the center of who we are. You tell us to bless one another. You encourage us to do good, but we have not listened to your word. Instead of loving, we have practiced hatred. Instead of blessing, we have perfected cursing. Instead of doing good, we have sought to get even. Forgive us for giving up. Give us grace to try again and encouragement to make your ways our ways. We pray, we wait, and we hope. Amen. God's love for us is genuine. When we need it most, God's grace washes over us, seeping into the cracks of our brokenness and saturating our thirsty hearts. Friends and family, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As forgiven people, I invite you to turn and greet those around you and share God's peace. for our children's time together. Mm -hmm. I see that. It has all the different, or a bunch of different names of God. Uh-oh, I know where you got that shirt at. You went to church camp. Did you get it at church camp? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I actually like what's on the front, too. It kind of goes along with our sermon this morning. It says, hello, my name is, what's it say? Children of God. Child of God, yeah. A child of God. I'll bet you've got some shirts like that, too, don't you? Yeah. But I like that. My name is child of God. What do, you, what do you think it means to be a child of God? Hmm. That's a good question, huh? Never thought of that, huh? God's child. God's child. Yeah, what, what does that mean? Do you know? Well, the Bible tells us a couple of things. It's that God tells us that we're created in God's image, Right? And because we're created in God's image, God loves us. So it means we're loved, right? Yeah. Yeah. And let's see, what else does it mean? What else? Can you think of anything else it might mean? Now, here, here's a question that goes kind of with that. 
Are there ever times when you feel a little bit sad or feel alone or feel like nobody likes you? Yeah? What do you do when you feel like that? What do you do? Pray. Pray? Okay. I try and make friends. You try and make some friends? Okay. Do you ever just kind of go in your room and sulk? Pout? Yeah. We do that too sometimes, don't we? Yeah. I want to ask you to do one more thing. When you're feeling like you're down and alone and that nobody cares about you, I want you to remember what that shirt says right there. My name is Child of God. And that means we know that we're made in God's image and that God loves us. And because God made us and God loves us, we're important. We're special, right? That's part of who we are. And because we're children of God, that means we love other people and we help them. And sometimes the best thing that we can do when we're feeling down and sad and alone is to go and do something to help others. So maybe that's the other thing that you can do. You can remember, I'm a child of God. God loves me. And because God loves me and God cares about me, I can care about others and help others. You think that would help? That might help, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. So that's, that's kind of our, our, our theme for the day. It's kind of to remember who we are and how we, how we get off of feeling sad and okay. So let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you that you have made us that you have made us unique individuals, that you have made us in your image, and that you love us and care for us. Help us to trust in that love and that care in all times and all places, and then going forth from that place, help us to share that love with others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming down today. Have a great day. Scripture reading this morning is from Jeremiah 15. And it is verses 15 through 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. O Lord, God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will turn you back, and you will stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze, and they will fight against you. 
but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here endeth the reading. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 9. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to the stranger. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This ends the reading of God's word. May the Lord bless it to our use and to our understanding. Would you please join with me in a word of prayer? Oh, Lord, you are God, the maker and creator of all, the source of all life and the source of all wisdom. And we come into your presence asking your spirit to take these words of scripture that we have read and to write them on our hearts and in our minds Use them to help us understand you and what it means to be your children. I would ask for your blessing upon me that the words that I share will be your words. Words that comfort and strengthen and guide us as we seek to follow you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We had a little problem at our house this week. Every time we were trying to get on the internet with our computers, our laptops, or not a comu our, our computers, our, my iPad, my phones, even our TV, which connects to the internet, it would work and then it would freeze, and then it would work and then it would freeze, and then it would work and it would freeze. I tried several things including shutting down the router and restarting it, resetting it, checking connections, re-entering passwords, all kinds of things, you know, you, you try to do to make sure that you can get on the internet and you can watch your favorite YouTube video or check on Facebook or, in my case, also look up sermon ideas and research stuff on the computer. Finally, Yesterday afternoon, I went and I bought a new router at Walmart and installed that. And it seems to have solved the problem. Now, I don't know if any of you know what a router is, 
But basically, it's a box that sits there, usually right next to your modem. You know, the cable comes in, and maybe it's even a part of the modem on your, if, if you've got uh, Blue Peak or Vast, it's part of it. You know, the cable comes in, and then you've got, it sends out a Wi-Fi signal for everyone. And you can run cables to it to connect your computers or other devices to it. There's some ports on the back that look kind of like telephone jacks, right? And what that does is it takes all the signals that are coming into this router and it sends them to the appropriate places. So some of you, you're the only one at home, and that's the only thing that's going on. In our house, we've got three of us that are on the internet uh, at the same time. And so it's got to sort out whatever signals are coming in from whether it's Cindy or Jason or me and sending it to where it needs to go. And then it's got to take the signals that are coming back to us and get it sorted out and sending it where it goes. And it serves a critical function, but it's kind of crazy. Because it's got all of these signals coming in and all of these signals going out, and sometimes they're trying to cross paths. And so it became a, a critical piece of technology in our house. I want you to think of the prophet. The prophet Jeremiah, who we heard from this morning, kind of like a router. Stop and think about what the prophet does. The prophet hears everything that's coming in from all the people. And it's got the king that's saying, we need to do this. And it's got other priests that are saying, oh, we need to do this. And there's other people who are prophets that we need to do this. And there's people who are complaining about the king and they're complaining to the prophet. And there's people who are complaining about the priest and they're complaining to the prophet. And the prophet's got to take all of these things in. And then it takes those signals and it sends them up to God. And at the same time, it's doing that. The prophet is receiving signals from God, messages from God, and it's sending them in all the different places. And sometimes, sometimes it just kind of overwhelms the prophet. Right? As we listened to the words of the prophet Jeremiah this morning, we're reminded that it was not an easy task for Jeremiah. He was in deep tension and even violent tension at times with other prophets and with what the king wanted and with what the people wanted and with what God wanted. And I liken the idea of Jeremiah in our passage this morning kind of like the router in our house that failed. It says, I'm tired, I'm worn out, it doesn't work anymore. You see, that's what Jeremiah was probably going through. Now, each of us has a bad day from time to time. Moments when things just don't go the way we want them to. When they do not turn out the way we expect. And it's natural that we would expect things to, and when we do our best at least, when we've not intentionally or knowingly done anything wrong, we expect things will work out all right in the end. And I think that's kind of where Jeremiah was at also. But nevertheless, in spite of our good intentions and our best efforts, there are times when our plans fail, when friends disappoint, when relatives do not understand when our health falters, 
or calamity strikes, or the stresses mount. And what do we do? Not surprisingly, we oftentimes ask the question, and we, we, we put it personal. We take it personally, don't we? We say, God, why is this happening? Or as the old Chris Christofferson song says, why me, Lord? Sometimes we say, frame that question a little more simply. Why do bad things happen to good people? Yet when we think about it in light of the existence of evil, maybe the question we should be considering or pondering is how do I survive this mess? Stop and think about it for a moment. How do I survive this mess? Literally, that's what Jeremiah is asking God. You see, Jeremiah had, as he said, taken your words and eaten them. And, it, and it's like honey. You know, you eat honey and it's sweet and it tasted good. And it filled his life. But now he's looking at his life and he's going, those words have turned sour. They haven't turned out the way I expect. Life isn't going the way I expected when, when you called me to this task, O oh Lord. And his lament is both incisive and hopeful. It's one that tears down and yet there's still hope. And God... God who had penetrated this prophet and possessed this prophet. And from that moment on, the prophet's life was overwhelmed with rage and with solitude. And Jeremiah is tired and seeks refuge in God. And so that's why I say it's both incisive and hopeful. He's complaining, he's grumbling. He's telling God all the things that are wrong. He's calling for God to do something about his enemies. And yet he seeks refuge in God. Why me? Why this? Jeremiah prays for God's merciless retribution on his tormentors and expresses his lack, his anguished lack of understanding as to why his efforts to do something, to do the right thing, in proclaiming God's message have resulted in such painful results. That's kind of the situation we often find our lives Try as we might, do what we might. Try as we might to follow God. Try as we might to do the right thing. To try as we might to help other people. And it just seems we get kicked and knocked down or made fun of. And we wonder. We wonder what's going on. And we grumble and complain to God. Maybe not quite the same way that Jeremiah does, but I can tell you more than once I've, called, I've said to God, God, I wish you would do something about that person or about that issue. It's really tempting, isn't it? When there is an evil person in the world, not even somebody you know personally, just evil in general. And you say, God, why don't you... Take care of that person. Get rid of them. Now God's response to Jeremiah is rather revealing. God calls Jeremiah to repent. And Jeremiah's kind of, what? What? God says to Jeremiah, turn around, repent, come back to me. And if you come back to me, and if you say the words that I'm telling you, I will be with you. I will protect you. I will watch over you. Didn't say it was going to get rid of his enemies. Didn't say it was going to make it any easier. 
but it exposes Jeremiah's weakness and exposes our weakness when we ask that why question. And at the same time, it gives us insight into how we too can survive the messes that we find ourselves in. Essentially, what God says to Jeremiah and what God says to us is, get off the pity pot. That's the first step. Because what is it that he's doing? Jeremiah is complaining and grumbling to God and everything's about him. God, I've done this wrong. Why aren't you taking care of me? I'm in so much trouble. Take care of my enemies. It's all about me, God. God says, repent. Turn around. Change. He's rebuked for his selfishness which is masquerading as devotion to God. So that's the first thing that we discover when we're dealing with our struggles with God. And we're dealing with our struggles, first thing we need to do is we need to turn back to God and say, God, help me. Help me find my way. The second thing that we hear is that God promises to the prophets and to us as believers is I will take you back if you turn back to me. And I will make you a fortified wall of bronze. They shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you. That's what he says to Jeremiah. And he says the same thing to us. Turn back to me and I will be with you. I will stay with you. I will make you strong. I will help deliver you. When Christians follow the example of Christ who prayed, not what I want, but what you want, self-centeredness is replaced by a God-centeredness that enables not only survival, but a sense of God's presence in the struggle that brings the best from us all. Even the promise of overcoming struggle and tribulation when a Christian heeds the word of the Apostle Paul, as we read it in Romans this morning, but in other places as well, about loving, praying for your enemies, serving and caring for them. What does that do? It, it turns our perspective. And when the world says to us, oh, you're being foolish and naive, God says to us, turn back to me. Hear what I have to say. Make it part of you and take that on. And I will be with you. Now it's still going to be a mess. We're still going to have problems in the world. It doesn't say that everything's going to be hunky-dory. That we're going to be able to sit around in a circle and sing Kumbaya. But it reminds us to change our perspective. And to see the world through God's eyes. And as we do that as we claim God's promise that God has made us a child of God. As we turn to God and rely on God's grace and trust in God's promises, it gives us focus to carry on one more day. It gives us focus and the ability to reach out and help someone else. To offer a helping hand. To be a source of strength.
we know that Jeremiah did. He turned back to God, began proclaiming God's word once again. And it's not that he didn't have problems later on. This is just one of four laments that we come across in the book of Jeremiah. And yet Jeremiah remained faithful to God. And it's a message that every one of us needs to hear and remember at some point in our lives. That there are days when, because, in spite of our best intentions, things don't turn out the way we expect. That there will be days when, no matter how hard we try, everything fails. And there are days when we will say, why me? But in the words of the song from Chris Christofferson, why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the treasures I've known, the pleasures I've known? What did I ever do to deserve even you, Lord, and the kindness you shown? May we, when we find ourselves on the pity pot, repent, turn back to God, claim God's promises, and then go forward serving God by loving and caring for others. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our God, you know the hurts in our lives and the pain that we carry. The hurts and pain that we don't even show to others. Help us. Help us when we grumble and complain. When we feel lost and alone, help us to turn to you. Help us to seek your grace, to rely on your power and your goodness, that we may carry on as the people you have created us to be, loving and serving you in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we sing the hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life. The words and music are on the screen. One of the things that we are called as Christians to do 
is to bring our first fruits to the Lord, to trust in God's care, and to bring to us, or to bring to God, the labors of our hands. We do that partially through the offering, offering of our gifts, but also offering of our lives in service, trusting in God's care for us. We bring to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Please join with me in the doxology. Friends, we come to this table, having offered ourselves, we come to this table invited by Christ to receive these gifts. We come from all walks of life, from all corners of our community and from our world, and we're united at this table with Christians around the world as we receive God's gifts. So come, let us receive the gifts of God. Let us celebrate God's blessings. Let us know that God has claimed us and made us his own. Please be seated. Would you join with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God. You are the one who created this world in which we live. You have formed us and all that is, all that is seen and unseen. And we look at scientists and astronomers uh, and, and others, astronomers and others as they study the universe and study our world. And they stand in awe of your creation. And there is more and more they continually learn. And, and we are reminded that, that you are the one who created all of that. And that as vast as our knowledge is, you are even greater. And that your love, your power, is even greater than the love and the power that, that we can try to, try to impose upon this world. You created us, O oh Lord, as part of that world. You created us to be caretakers and to watch over this world to care for one another and to care for your creation. And we have not always been able to do that. But still, you call us. Still, you claim us. Still, you make us a part of your family. Still, you bless us with your presence. And so we join with that great crowd of angels and saints around your throne, praising your name, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise also, praise you also for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. The one who did not consider being equal with you something to be grasped and to held on to. But instead he humbled himself, was born in a manger, 
who walked upon this earth with us teaching and healing, pointing us to you and calling us back to your love. He was obedient to you even to the point that he suffered death and humiliation upon that cross. But you did not leave him in the grave. You raised him up and exalted him and gave him that name that is above every name. That at his name every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We thank you, O Lord, that, by Je- that Jesus on the night of his arrest, when he gathered with his disciples, he took bread and broke it and blessed it, or blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup and he gave him a cup and said, this is the cup of my blood poured out for the remission of sins. Drink of it, all of you. As we gather around this table, we ask your spirit to bless this bread and this cup. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, a sign and seal of the sacrament and of the covenant you have made with us. By that same spirit, we lift up before you those who are in need of your care and healing. Especially we pray for Henry and Jan, for Jeff and Angela. We pray for uh, uh, those who have lost loved ones and ask for your comfort and strength for them. We would ask you, O Lord, to open us and turn us that we may indeed proclaim your word and show your love to them and to all who are in need. We ask you to be with Carol and with Donna. We ask you to be with those who will be coming to join us next week as we celebrate. And we ask for your spirit to be among us this day. This we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. And in his name, hear us as we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord blessed the bread for his disciples and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this remembering me. He took the cup. A simple cup. A cup that they had shared, I'm sure, many times on previous occasions. But as he poured the wine into the cup, as he gave it to them, He said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the remission of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Whenever we eat this bread, whenever we drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death, his resurrection, until he comes again in glory. Friends, the feast is prepared. Let us receive the gifts of our Lord. I would ask if my servers would please come forward. This morning we are going to serve communion by coming down the center aisle like we uh, oftentimes do and receiving the elements at the front.
Let us pray. We thank you, dear Lord, for these gifts we have received, for this bread and this cup, strengthened by them and by your eternal love and grace. May we continue to serve you, loving our neighbors, praying for those who persecute us, reaching out and caring for a world in need. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I, the Lord of sea and sky, the words and music are on the, hymn, are on the screen. Let us rise and sing together.
God has promised to love you and to watch over you, to make you a fortified wall of bronze. So go forth trusting and living in God's presence. And may God, who is faithful, bring to completion in you the good work he has begun through Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be glory and honor now and always. Amen. Thank you.